What's cracking, yo? This video, we're gonna be talking about string methods. So we can get rid of all this garbage. We're gonna start fresh. Speaking of fresh, have you guys thought about how in the world are you gonna stay fresh and up to date with your technology skills? Well, I know exactly how you can do that. I ask you guys to check out the link in the description to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is going to give you what you need to know to succeed in the industry. This is essentially a boot camp that's really centric around solving real world problems and getting a good job. So for example, they have a class in web development where they cover JavaScript, React, Node.js, Git and GitHub, user experience, lots of cool stuff integrated together into solving awesome problems. They have that one online and in person, but they also have classes in iOS, user experience, and much, much more. So check them out. The link is in the description. Let them know I sent you their way. They'll give you $250 off. So yeah, why wouldn't you sign up? Go do that, guys. I'd really appreciate it. With that, let's dive in. When we talked about number methods, there were some we called directly on number, like so, and then there were others we called on instances of number. Well, string works in a similar manner and that we could say string with a capital S dot and put some of this stuff. There's really nothing too fun inside of here, so we're not gonna be focusing on these methods. We're gonna be talking about instance methods. So this means we need to create an instance of a string for our fave food. And you know, I'm feeling a little creative today. We're gonna go with tacos. Very first one I wanted to talk about is how to get a character at this string. We showed you in the previous video that you can just use array-like syntax using the square brackets, but another one you might see is dot char at or car at, however you guys want to say it. And then inside the parentheses, you just put the position. Do a refresh, you should get C. So that's a totally useless method. Moving on to the next one, concat. What this is going to do is it's going to take another string which will append to the previous one. So I could say is totes lit. And now it's gonna say tacos is totes lit, which <laughs> fail. There we go. This is also kind of useless because we could just use the plus operator. So we could just say fave food plus this string here. And you can see we get the same result. So if you prefer to use methods, they have methods for doing the concatenation as well as getting a character at an index. But overall, I like to use the techniques I've shown you so far. So I don't really see these methods as very useful. But I thought I'd share them with you guys because you might run into them when you're coding or picking up another application. Another note on the concatenation is it can take multiple arguments. So I could say, hey, comma, test, Whatever you want to put in here, you can do it. You can even put spaces if you need. And there you go. There should be a space right there. This is going to return a new string, so favorite food is not going to be modified. That's really important to know, so if you need to save it, you need to store it in some kind of variable. Now we're going to get into some more useful methods. The first one is finding a string within another string. So I'm going to start fresh again. Let's say we have a variable. I need to make up my mind if I'm going to use let or var. Obviously let makes more sense in the context of this block but it's not a huge deal just when we're testing things out. But we're going to make this called content and just set it equal to some large value I wrote out. Now we're going to search for things in this string. So we're gonna make a search term and I'm just gonna call it search one and set that equal to string. So you can see the word string is in here, so it should work, but we're going to try another search and that's going to be number, which is not going to work because it doesn't have the word number in it. So what we need to do is we do a console log just to get the output. This is going to be a method on the content variable. So content dot includes. And the argument is the thing you're looking for. So we can just pass in search one. So when we run this, we get true because it found it. We can do it again with search two, which should give us false. So that's how that method works. It's kind of useless out of context, but this actually might come up if you're wanting to search for something within a string later on in your code. You can also pass in a second argument, which is the index to start at. So for example, I could say, hey, start at index 30. And now when I do a refresh, we get false because I don't know where index 30 is, but obviously it's after the S. A more versatile function is called index of, and this will allow us to find where things are in a string. So I'm going to replace this with index of and pass in search one. Same thing here, search two. Now when we refresh, we get 29 and negative one. The negative one means it was not found. The 29 will give us the index. Remember it's zero base, so we start at zero here. So this is a little bit more useful because not only did it tell us, yes, it exists, but it also said where it exists. Same here, you can pass in another argument, which is the index to start at. Here's a little trick if you want to find the second one, for example. Let's say we are searching for the character A. So there's one right here. So let's see what this will give us, three. 
So if we wanted to find the second one, all we have to do is put an index larger than that second one. We can see the value 16. If we put it at three, what happens is it's, it finds it immediately at three. So we need to make sure it's larger. Obviously, we're not always going to know where the first occurrence is. So if you want to dynamically search for the second occurrence, you can do a search within this search. <laughs> this is where it gets fun. So we could say content dot index of search one. So this is going to return three. And then what we can do is just add one to it. So we can say plus one. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There we go. It's a little complicated, but that'll give us the second occurrence. Now, if you want to find the last index, such as this one right here, if we're looking for A still, well, there's actually a special method for that. So that is going to be last index of. And it works the same exact way. So now when we do a refresh, we get 61. So that's the index of this A right here. You can do a similar thing if you want the second to last one. Just pass in this call to the second argument and subtract one from it. You need to subtract one because it's going from this end now, not the left. So those are some of the basic string methods. Hopefully that just gives you some examples of how we can have lots of fun with strings. Obviously out of context, this can seem more of like a reference and it kind of is, but hopefully later on when you realize you might need one of these, you can think, oh yeah, Caleb did a video of this. Let me check that out. So thanks guys, if you've enjoyed the content, please be sure to subscribe and check out the next video because we're gonna go into some more string methods. Let me tell you, it's gonna be sick. So see you there.